You have been asking for it for weeks and it is finally here, the sequel to the now famous How to Draw a Cartoon Face tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know in order to draw a cartoon body, no matter your skill level. Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. So this video is more or less of a part two for my how to draw a cartoon face video. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend you go and check it out now. It will be linked in the description below in the annotations and in the comments just to make sure that <laughs> you don't have to look too far to find it. But basically, I'm really just going to be covering the body in this video. So if you have a face from another video or another tutorial, that's totally fine. If not, I highly recommend that you draw one before watching this. And if you have your face from the previous tutorial we did together, make sure that you open this canvas because I'm going to be reusing the same layers. But if you don't have the same layers, it's okay because I'm going to be showing you how to create them anyway. And just as a reminder, these are the dimensions of my canvas. It's literally just the size of my iPad screen because this is just a demo. But make sure that you pick dimensions that suit your own project and your own needs. If you're not exactly sure what that means, I have a video that explains everything you need to know in order to pick your own canvas size for digital art. So I will also link this one in the description, the annotation, and in the comments. So the first thing to do before even sketching is to decide the proportions you want to use for your cartoon. So for example, you can see here 1-1 one, one would mean the body is the same size as the head. Then 1-2 one, would mean the head fits twice in the body, 1-3 means the head fits three times in the body, and so on. Personally, I like to use when I draw a children's book illustration a proportion 1 to 1.5. So as a reference, I'm just going to use a template that I created for my ultimate illustration bundle, which will also be linked everywhere that I mentioned earlier. So you can see here, again, the head would fit one, one and a half time in the body. But don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly how to create your own sketch. So to do that, create a new layer and rename it to sketch. And now we're going to start drawing. I know I've been talking and talking and talking, but now's the fun part. So for the sketch, you can pick whichever color you like. I like to just go with gray. And in this video, I'm always going to be recommending two brushes. So one brush is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate. And the second brush is going to be a brush from one of my bundle, in this case, the illustration bundle. And it's going to be a brush that would maybe help you uh, get to the next level, save some time, and get more professional results. So you will always have two options. For the sketch, you can use either the HP Pencil brush that comes in the sketching panel from Procreate, or if you have my illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the sketching brush, of course. So we're going to start by laying down the proportions, and for that, just go ahead and draw a circle. If you have Procreate, you can hold your pencil and tap with a secondary finger, which is going to create a perfect circle. Now with two fingers, just go ahead and measure one head. And in my case, I want to do one and a half for the body. So I'm just going to measure roughly a half and mark it down. So you want to mark where the feet are going to be. But again, you can use whichever proportions you want. You just need to measure as many heads as you want. Once that is done, go ahead and erase any marks that might be between the head and the feet. And then go ahead and split that space in two, roughly. So I personally like to have the top of the body be exactly the same length as the legs, but that's definitely a personal preference. So feel free to experiment with that and have a shorter torso and longer legs or shorter legs and longer torso. Speaking of the torso, 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 <laughs> Speaking of the torso, that's where we're going to start. So go ahead and roughly outline kind of the width you want. That is also something that you can experiment with. I like to go with like a, roughly a circle. And we're going to think of the torso as a cereal box here so that our character looks three dimensional. So start by drawing a rectangle or a square, depending again on the width you want your torso to be. And we're going to, depending on the angle, of course, add one side of the cereal box. So my character here is going to be in three quarters, so I definitely want to see one side. If your character is seen from the front, you're not going to see the side of the cereal box, just the front. And there's no need to be super precise here. You can see I'm being really loose with my sketch, and I recommend you do the same thing. 
You can also add a semicircle for the hips to kind of see where you would hinge the body if you were to put it in a different position. I know I don't have one in my uh, template on the left, but it can be helpful, especially if you're new to drawing characters. And then I like to start the legs with just literally two little sausages, just so I have an idea of basically what I'm doing. And here, the position that I'm drawing is really stiff. It's just a character that is standing in a really unnatural position. But with the same technique, once you practice a little bit more, you'll be able to move the limbs because I'm like this, the technique is the same no matter the position and the angle. You just need to kind of rotate your limbs a little bit. So I like to kind of split the legs in two, so one top rectangle for the thighs and then another one for the calves. But check this out. So this is going to be an extreme example, but in general, when you're drawing a leg, especially seen from the side, definitely not from the front, but you're going to get some contrast between curves and straight lines. So the back of the thigh, as you can see here, would be a straight line and then the front would be a curved line. And then the calf is the opposite, the back of the calf is a curved line and then the front of the lower leg is a straight line. So that's really interesting to use in your characters. Obviously in the little sketch it was <laughs> way too... Uh, way too much like I was just trying to show it to you but keeping that in mind can really help give a little bit more life to your characters and make the leg look more realistic without without them being fully realistic of course but it just helps getting your your character to look a little bit less like a stick figure honestly and for the feet you can see I've I really just draw little shoes basically so little oval shapes but seriously, here for this part of the sketch, don't worry about being precise, don't even think about erasing, just map out the general shapes and in the next step I'm going to show you how to clean it up a little bit before moving on to the collar. And all we have left to do on this little sketch is adding the arms, of course. And I find it's really helpful to draw two ellipses where the shoulders would be and if your character is at an angle, you might only see one of the shoulders. And it's also super helpful to draw two curved lines, so one for the bottom of the hand and then one for the wrist. The bottom one will be roughly in the center of the thighs and then the other one will be roughly in line with the hips. So you can definitely draw that on your character, it can be super helpful. And I also like to just roughly sketch the line my arm is going to be doing. No, the position of the arm basically with just one little line before we move again and kind of fleshing it out. <laughs> So I like to just draw two little ovals like this, so one for the top of the arm and then one for the forearm. And uh, sorry I had to zoom here because literally my head was not the shot, <laughs> but um, yeah. And for the hands, I'm going to do a separate video teaching you how to draw hands because it's, it's a whole process. But for this, just go ahead and draw one little rectangle with a little oval for the thumb. And we're just going to worry about the other fingers later in the process, but I say worry, honestly, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty simple. Trust me. So once you have this, uh, well, I'm just going to hide or delete actually the template so that I can center the sketch in the center of my iPad and yeah we're going to go ahead and clean it up a little bit. Personally when I draw children's books I just go from there. I don't do this uh, clean sketch part but it might really be helpful. So just go ahead and create a new layer, rename it to sketch 2 and then lower the opacity of the first sketch. So we're just going to go back and kind of pick which lines we want to move on with. So what I like to think of uh, for this step is that I'm dressing my character in a furry pajama or like a morph suit. So basically something that is going to follow exactly the curves of the body without having any, you know, clothing element aspect to it. So basically just drawing the outline of the character so that I have a better idea of which lines in all the lines that I sketch I'm gonna end up going with for the final character. And this is a step where you also can be really quick. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're not going to see these lines in the final result anyway. We just want to have a better idea, especially if you're newer to drawing. We just want to give ourselves all the best vibe, all the good chances, put everything on our side basically uh, for when we're starting to add the color so that it is as easy as it can be. 
And as promised, this is what I do for the hand. So I just draw the thumb just like we did before and then kind of three more thumbs <laughs> for the other fingers. Uh, nothing complicated. Think of it as a glove and honestly don't worry about drawing five fingers for cartoons. It's really not essential. The hands are actually going to look a bit more crowded that way and just kind of weird. So keep it simple. But again, don't worry, I'm going to do a full on video about hands in the future. So feel free to pause the video here to take all the time you need in order to draw the footy pajama around your character. But once you have the outline that you like, just go ahead and merge the two sketch layers together by squishing them with two fingers so that we only have one sketch layer. And depending on the file you are working in, you might want to move your sketch layer closer to the color if you have the face. I'm personally putting it below the face sketch layer. And I like to change the blending mode to multiply and lower the opacity until I can just barely see the sketch. And basically what multiply does is the sketch is going to look darker on darker colors later. So it's just a little bit helpful to have it in multiply as opposed to normal when we lower the opacity. Anyway. <laughs> So at this point, use the arrow tool setting it to uniform and place the head where it is supposed to be. So if you already have a face like I was saying, just make sure they select the entire group or all of your layers and resize them and place them where you want them to be in your final piece. And don't forget to rename your face group to cartoon. And the last thing we have to do before adding the color is sketching the clothes, of course. So for the clothes, you can really go with anything you want. And I'm obviously not going to cover every single outfit that exists in the world in this video, um, but I'm gonna give you general pointers. So the first thing I personally like to do is mark the bottom part of the shirt as well as the collar. And here we can't really see it, so I'm just going to up the opacity of my sketch um, for now. And yeah, once you have the bottom of your shirt, the color of your shirt, you just have to decide of the length of the sleeve. So here I'm just gonna go with short sleeve, but you could go with uh, half, three quarters, full length, really anything you want. You could also just have no sleeves, you could have spaghetti straps. Seriously, there are so many ways to customize the clothes and it's not more complicated, it's just changing where you know, the sleeves and, and the shape of the collar, basically. So if you want to have pants, you basically already have your pants drawn. If you want to draw shorts, it's kind of like, you know, a t-shirt, but on legs. I'm obviously just going to draw a skirt here, which would be, you know, two diagonal lines. Oops, I erased. <laughs> and then connecting the diagonal lines. Come on, if I can switch back to the pencil. There we go. Connecting the two diagonal lines with a curved line. So again, the clothes, you can do so many different things. You can experiment, you can draw a bunch of different outfits for one character by just creating a bunch of different layers. So seriously, experiment. And you can see here, I started experimenting myself and wanted to do kind of a skirt overall situation, but I quickly realized that I just could not be bothered with that right now. <laughs> But yeah, it's so fun. You can dress your character in so many different outfits and uh, just have a whole lot of fun with it and create really different results by just changing a few little details here and there. It's color time! If you are working in the same file that you used to draw your cartoon face, go ahead and open up your layer folders. And you could draw on the face layer here. I'm personally going to be creating new layers just so that if new people are watching this tutorial without watching the face tutorial first, they can follow along. So create a new layer and rename it to skin. So on this layer, we're pretty much going to be doing the same thing as we did for the face layer. And I'm going to just pick the same color, so zooming in quite a lot so that I can pick a dark spot of the skin. Just hold my finger to grab the color. And we're going to just outline the shape. So for that, you can use in the airbrushing panel the hard brush. And if you watch my watercolor videos, make sure that you up the opacity back to 100%. Otherwise, if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the base round brush. And like I was saying, we're really just going to outline. So everything that is skin on your character, just outlining. So it's probably going to be the hands and the arms, depending on the length of the skin, of the skin, <laughs> of the sleeves, of course. 
And you really need to make sure that the shape you draw here at this point really looks good because this is going to be the base for all of our texture and colors that we add later on. So take your time here to draw really neat, really nice outlines and you can just fill them in using the auto fill function. So dragging your color onto the shape, but make sure that your shape is fully closed because as you can see here, if you don't, well, it's gonna cover the entire canvas. So just go ahead and draw all your outlines for all the skin. Don't forget the legs, maybe the neck as well is going to require some color. But don't worry, if you already had the face and the um, hair is overlapping a little bit strangely, <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to fix that in the next step. And guys, if you've watched this far in the video, please go ahead and comment cartoon. We've been doing this secret password kind of situation for a few months now, or a few weeks I should say, and it's been really great because it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you guys. And it's also really cool because you guys know me, but I don't know you. So whenever you leave a comment, I get to see your name, your username, sometimes even your face, and it's just so great to see the wonderful drawing community that we're building here on this channel. So go ahead and comment the word cartoon and we'll keep going. Okay, so how to deal with the hair situation. <laughs> Once you have all your skin, you're probably gonna notice that on the clothes and the hair, there's going to be some weird overlap, but don't worry about it. There's a really easy way to fix it in Procreate. So if you hold two fingers over your skin layer, it's going to select the skin. And with that selection, you can then go and tap on your hair layer and just use the eraser to erase the skin. Um, you might also have to do it on your hair detail layer, maybe on the hair light and everything that you know is overlapping weirdly. But that's seriously a trick that can save you a whole lot of time and that's one of the main reasons why I draw on separate layers is just so that I can easily grab the selections and erase all these strange overlaps um, that might happen over time. I'm personally going to put this skin layer above the eyes layer and below the air but you can just kind of put it wherever you need depending on your own. Uh, layer organization and you're going to then create a new layer renaming it to shirt and putting it below the hair but above the skin and for the shirt I mean for the clothes you can obviously pick whichever color you want and just like for the skin you're going to outline the shape so using the base round brush or the hard brush from the airbrushing panel I'm just going with the same color as the eyes but I'm going to show you a quick way to tweak that later and don't hesitate to hide any layer that might be in the way. So for example, I just went ahead and hit the hair layer so that I could properly draw my outline. And just like for the skin, make sure that you take the time to draw something that you're happy with. And once you are, just fill it in. And you can go back in your layer panel, select the shirt shape by holding two fingers on the layer, and then going back to your hair layer and just erasing the weird overlaps. So again, this is a technique that you can see is super quick and just kind of allows you to experiment a little bit more in the way you're drawing without having to worry of like, okay, I'm gonna make sure that when I draw the hair outline, it doesn't overlap with anything. You can just kind of be a little bit more quick and efficient doing that. So just see which layer overlaps with which and erase when needed. And so you're gonna use the exact same technique for all the clothing on your character. I personally like to draw the bottom part below the shirt and above the skin, so just creating a new layer. In my case, it's a skirt, so I'm going to rename it to skirt and picking the color. I'm just gonna go with black here because, again, I'm gonna tweak the colors later. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Um, so don't worry too much about the colors. Really, here, the only thing you want is to have the base shape, and you want the base shapes to be really perfect. <laughs> So creating the outline and just filling it in. And at this point, I'm going to speed the video up just a tiny little bit because, you know, it's the exact same thing that we've been doing for <laughs> like five minutes at this point. So just going over all your clothes and doing this technique of creating a separate layer, outlining, and then filling the shape in. So super simple, nothing crazy here. And you can take your time, you can pause the video and we're going to meet at the next step in which I'm going to show you how to fix the color and get a really cool color palette for your clothes. So when you have all your clothes shaped, go ahead and select the shirt layer or whichever layer you want to choose honestly in your clothes. And we're going to use the hue saturation and brightness tool in the adjustment panel, applying it to the entire layer. And you can see here, you can easily tweak the settings like the hue to change the color, the brightness to change if it's light or dark, as well as the saturation to change how vibrant the color looks. 
So this is a really quick way to just kind of experiment and see what would look great with your character. So I personally like to start with one article of clothing being colorful and the other ones being either black or like white or something like that. Because I find it's easier to just pick one color that I like and then go from there. Because especially in this case, the hair being purple, you want to make sure that, you know, the shirt works really well with the hair and then you can change the color of the other article of clothing. So once you're happy with the main shirt color or the main bottom color, depending on which article of clothing you started with, you can kind of go ahead and tweak in the shape a little bit more uh, once you kind of see what the color mass is going to look like. Once you're happy with that, you can go back and tweak the other article of clothing. I'm just going to stay with white, uh, white, <laughs> black for now because I'm happy with that. I think there's already enough color in my character. Okay guys, I need to confess, I just had a cup of tea as well as some 90% chocolate and now I have way too much energy, so sorry. <laughs> but hopefully my weird energy is going to help make this long tutorial a little bit more interesting for you. So let's, let's just keep going and see what happens. So once you have your basic shapes colored in and you like the color of everything, we're going to add a little bit more texture because right now it's a little bit flat and I don't know about you, but I think it's a little bit too boring. So create a new layer above the skin layer and tap on it to apply it as a clipping mask. You don't need to rename it because we're going to merge it later and we would lose the name anyway. So if you have the face cartoon that we did together in the previous tutorial, you can just color pick the lighter skin tone and go with that. Otherwise, you can pick the base color that you use for your skin for the body and just make it lighter. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add texture by using either the 6B pencil that comes from the uh, in the sketching panel that comes with Procreate, or if you have the illustration bundle, you can pick the basic texture brush. And we're just going to cover the entire area, basically kind of really roughly and quickly like this. But I have a pro tip for you. Whenever you want to fill in a surface, kind of try to avoid making uh, kind of a zigzag motion. So kind of something like this because the edges and the texture are going to look really jagged and not super good. Try to train your wrist to do more of a spiral motion. Obviously your spiral is going to be way more condensed, like you don't want to actually see the holes in the spiral, but train your wrist to be a bit looser and kind of color in circles as opposed to zigzags. Hopefully that made sense, but yeah, it's just a little pro tip that you can use both with digital art and also real life pencil and paper. And by the way, I don't know if you've noticed, but the fact that we have a clipping mask means that everything that we draw on this texture layer is staying within the skin layer below it. So that's really helpful. We don't have to worry about staying within the lines or erasing or anything like that. So quickly just cover the entire skin area of your character. And once that is done, go ahead and create a new layer above this texture layer. Apply it as a clipping mask. You're going to see I'm just going to do it in a second. And here, all we're doing is we're going to add some pinker, pinkish <laughs> uh, elements on the skin. So you can either color drop the cheeks if you had it or use the color wheel to make your base pink, base skin color a bit more pink. Gosh, I'm struggling, I'm sorry. So for that, I like to add some pink on the elbows, on the end of the fingers, and also on the knees, but that is something that you can experiment with. That is just what I personally like to do. But basically the goal here with this step is just to make the character feel more alive. So like there's blood circulating in the body and it's not like just a plastic doll or something. And once that is done, you can merge your three layers. So the skin layer, the texture layer, and the pink layer together. And we're going to use this texture technique for all the clothing elements as well. So create a new layer above the shirt layer and apply it as a clipping mask. Select the base color for the shirt, make it lighter, and then use the spiral technique to cover the entire area with your nice texture. Once you're done, go ahead and select the shirt layer again or whichever article of clothing you are working on. And going back in the adjustment panel, selecting hue, saturation and brightness for the entire layer, you can go ahead and kind of tweak the brightness and the saturation and maybe also the hue just so you get a little bit more contrast between the base color and the texture color so that everything looks really good. And once you're happy with that, you can just merge both layers so that you have just one shirt layer. And we're going to repeat the same technique for all the article of clothing. So creating a new layer, applying it as a clipping mask, selecting the base color, making it lighter, coloring the entire thing with the texture, then maybe tweaking the base color again. And then when we're happy, merging everything together. 
So again, you can see I'm doing it for the shoes as well, but yeah, it's really the same thing. There is no secret here. It's really just the same technique. And so feel free to pause the video here and do it on all the pieces of clothing on your character and we will meet at the next step. So once you have all your texture, we're going to add a little bit more details and some outlines and things to make it look better because right now it's still flat and I'm not down for that. So if you have the cartoon face, go ahead and select the face details layer, otherwise create a layer above everything. And you can either color pick the color of the mouth or go ahead and select a brown color. So for the brush, you can use either the HP pencil and the sketching panel, or if you have the illustration bundle, pick the outlines brush. And here, seriously, uh, there's no real rule. I mean, there's never a rule. Whenever you're doing a tutorial, guys, please feel free to do whatever you want, of course. <laughs> like, you never have to do exactly what I do. But yeah, especially here, what I personally like to do is kind of outline not everything and not with straight cartoonish kind of black straight outlines. I like to give more of a like a sketch vibe to my lines. So I go ahead and I draw multiple small lines and sometimes it's kind of overlapping with the, the base color. Sometimes it's outside of it. Sometimes it's on it. I mean, I like to keep it really quick because I want something to look not super static and not super like i don't want to say too finished because i want my piece to look finished but i don't want it to look too precise and perfect i guess i want it to have a lot of life and a lot of energy to it so i recommend you do the same and you can see here i never erase and the reason for that is it kind of ties in with what i was just saying when i want to have a result that is really full of life i much rather do kind of try a line and then undo if I don't like it until I get a line that I like instead of drawing a little section, erasing, drawing again, erasing because that way you're pretty much sure you're gonna get lines that are super lifeless and stiff. So you much rather wanna have a loose wrist and draw a big line and then undo or redo and undo and redo and usually it pretty much takes less time to do it that way as well as opposed to just erasing all the time. And we're going to do the same thing on the shirt the skirt and the shoes as well. So once you're done, just go ahead and create a new layer above the face details layer or the body details layer, depending on how you decided to call it. And this time I'm gonna call it shirt details, but you can call it with whichever article of clothing uh, you are going to outline. <laughs> so just pick a, like a zone that is dark and then make the color darker so that you have outlines that are darker than the darkest color on that piece of clothing. Wow, that was a mouthful. <laughs> but yeah, again, same technique. We're just going to outline really roughly, really quickly. And you might want to activate your sketch again just so you can kind of see what you're doing. Um, that's, that's again, a personal preference. If you're comfortable without it, fine. And if you need it, that's fine as well. And you can also add more little like details on this layer as well. It doesn't have to be just the outlines. You're gonna see here for the neck part. What is it called? the neck opening no the uh, i forgot how to speak english okay i google parts of a shirt and i still don't know what it's called so let's roll with that <laughs> but basically i just like adding a secondary line around that and also sometimes the seam on the side of the shirt just to make it feel a little bit more interesting and yeah you just want to add details and make it feel like there's something going on <laughs> Once you're done, you can move on and do the same thing for the other article of clothing. So in my case, I'm going to create a new layer, renaming it to sh skirt details. Guys, it's time for this tutorial to be over because I really cannot speak anymore. Um, but yeah, picking up the dark color, just making it even darker and then outlining everything. You're going to see on the skirt what I do is I have little pleats. So if you have a skirt, definitely try to add a little bit more dimension to it because otherwise it looks like a straight you know, like the dog collars, like the cones of shame. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like a cone of shame if you don't add any pleat or any folds or anything on the skirt. So make sure you do that. And if you're drawing pants, you can draw the seam on the side of the pants, maybe a detail in the knees and maybe on the bottom of the pants, like where they fold. So you can really experiment um, and add some details on top of the outlines as well on this layer. So like for the shoes, you can add a little uh, laces. Is that how you call them? Yeah, laces. I'm overthinking everything now. I personally like to do it super simple. So just two little, like a little bow and then three little lines. So 
it's really easy on this uh, on these details layer to add a lot more personality to your character and just yeah making it look like yours okay so we're now going to really bring this character to life by adding shadows and lights so if you have already a file with uh, the cartoon face just pick the shadow layers otherwise go ahead and create a new one rename it to shadows put it above everything and if you already have a shadow layer kind of change the blending mode to normal put the opacity to 100 so that you can color pick the same color you used and if you don't already have a shadow layer just pick a grayish purplish color for your shadows and we're then all going to apply this layer as a linear burn layer and then lowering the opacity around 60 percent for the brush you can use again in the sketching panel the 6b pencil or if you have the illustration bundle going back to the basic texture brush and we're going to use the exact same technique that we used to add texture on our character but just in one specific area so let's pretend in my case the light is coming from the top right which means the left area or the left side of my character is going to be darker or covered in shadows so in your case, the shadows are really going to depend on the environment your character is in. So make sure that you locate the light source. If your character is on a white background, there's no light source, so you can just decide where it is and then add the shadows accordingly. So remember, the rule with shadows is it's always on the opposite side of the light. So if your sun, for example, if you have a picture and the sun is on the top right, the shadows is always going to be on the left of everything. So super simple. You're also probably going to be getting shadows where things overlap. So you can see here when the skirt overlaps the legs, it creates a shadow because the cast, the shadow, the skirt, <laughs> because the skirt casts a shadow on the legs. I got it. <laughs> so yeah, just add some shadows. It doesn't have to be complicated. And because it's cartoon, it doesn't have to be super realistic as well. And once you're done, you can just go in with the eraser and kind of clean up the shape a little bit. I personally like to not clean up when I have a background to kind of just have the shadows blend in the color of the background. But since our character here is on white, it looks really weird if we don't go back in and clean up by erasing. One thing that I really love to do whenever I'm drawing cartoon or children's book illustration is to create a layer on top and just add kind of a secondary color. So if you have your cartoon face file canvas, go ahead and again make this layer uh, normal and put the opacity at 100% so that you can color pick. Otherwise, create a new layer above everything. Pick a bright color, whichever it is. I'm going with blue. And you're then going to change the blending mode of this layer to soft light, leaving the opacity at 100%. So on this layer, it's a little bit strange. Kind of pretend that there is a bright, or not necessarily a bright light, but an object with this bright color on the ground and that it reflects the color on the character. So all the character surfaces that are facing downwards, you're going to add this little color on it. And honestly, when you think about it, it doesn't make sense but it really brings a lot of life on your character. And especially if it is in an environment, for example, if it is outside on the grass, you would use green and it would just help your character blend in the decor so much more. You can see here, it's nothing big, but it makes some sort of a difference in terms of, again, making the character feel more interesting. We're also going to add some lights and the lights, I like to put them below all the details layers. So create a new layer, rename it to body lights or something like that. And this layer, we're going to change the blending mode of it to add. And this mode called add is really cool because every color you're going to use is just going to behave like light basically, but it's also very intense. So lower the opacity around 30% for now, but you can always tweak it later. And I like to go in with a bright yellow color. So yeah, if you already had a cartoon face, you can go back and pick the hair light color. So putting the layer back to normal 100% and then color picking. But honestly, you really don't need to bother about that. You can just go and pick your yellow yourself. It'll be fine. 
so on this body lights layer we're just going to draw well lights obviously but what i like to do with lights as opposed to the shadows is just keeping them very simple and kind of on the edges so i'm going to go back to the outline brush otherwise you can still use the 6b pencil that you are using for the secondary color that we just did and i'm just going to outline the opposite side of the shadow so if we go back to the example if we have a sun on the top right corner of our piece the lights are going to be kind of outlining the right side of our character so yeah I'm not sure exactly what to say here <laughs> more than that it's super simple and it really helps the character pop especially when it's an environment because it kind of gives a little bit more contrast between the outline and the background and the color of the character itself so experiment here um, I like to add a little bit more like kind of almost glitter <laughs> it's not glitter but um, reflection I guess on the knee as well uh, you can see on the face on the cheeks I have the two little ovals there so you can definitely play and add some highlights as well on this layer and areas that are not necessarily the edges so experiment with that have fun but seriously don't skip this step it is so important in making the character look way more alive interesting vibrant all the good things and we're also going to add a shadow below our character because right now it looks like it's floating and it's not great. <laughs> so for that you might want to collapse your character group so just clicking on the arrow so that you can create a layer and put it below the entire character. This layer you can rename to ground shadow, just shadow or anything you're going to remember basically. Um, I'm not your mom, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> And very, this is going to be very simple. We're just going to scribble a shadow below our character. I like to use again a grayish purplish color and using the basic texture brush or the 6B pencil. Super simple, just scribbling a shadow so that your character looks like it is actually standing on something as opposed to just weirdly floating in a white universe. And guys, if you enjoyed drawing this little cute character, you might want to consider giving it a furry friend. And for that, you can definitely check out my how to draw a cute cat video, which is linked just right here. So make sure to click on that link and I will meet you there.